fractal. This term was introduced by the mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot in 1975. The term is based on Latin fractus, meaning broken or fractured. Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are so similar across different scales. This means that there is no characteristic scale. Such objects have an infinite number of scales for all tastes. And increasing the scales does not lead to a simplification of the structure. The simplest example of a fractal is the cock curve. When constructing, the following principle is used. At the next iteration, each segment is divided into three parts. And the middle part is replaced by an equilateral triangle, with the side length equal to one third of the original segment. When working with fractals, the main thing is to understand the principle. And the coding itself is a purely technical issue. Fractals can be classified in different ways. For example, we can distinguish large groups. In the first group, fractals are obtained by geometric constructions. The previous example with the cock curve is just from this group. The second group is based on mathematical formulas. An example would be the Mandelbrot set. In the iterative process of constructing fractals of the third group, some of its parameters change randomly. An example would be plasma. Such fractals are often used to model landscapes. Each of these groups has its own classification. There are other groups, such as fractals in nature or handmade fractals. In this lesson, we will build an example from a group of geometric fractals. And to be more precise, it will be a fractal related to L systems. Sometimes such constructions are called the fractal tree. And it will be a real mystic. We will make this project interactive. But for now, I want to get too far ahead. Fasten your seat belts and bring your seat backs to an upright position. Let's fly! We need two files, HTML and JavaScript. Standard HTML template. In style settings, full screen, hidden scroll bars, black background and zero padding. The canvas element, this time we'll do without an identifier. And finally, this link to the script file. Where do you think we'll start? Of course from the object. Properties for working with canvas. This is where we will store the screen dimensions. Initialization. We get a reference to our canvas element using the element search method by the selector. We read the dimensions and set the dimensions of the canvas. And get our object that provides methods and properties for drawing on the canvas element. <laughs> 